Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Beginner Java's dot, or BeginnersJava.com's continuing tutorial series. I No matter how many times I say that, I'm still going to get it wrong. Oh, it's awful. I don't know how you guys can stand it. Jesus. Tell your friends. <laughs> okay, but uh, welcome back. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, access modifiers. Specifically, how to work with them and around them. Um, I already programmed this video once, so if things look a little different, that's because it is. Um, we actually left things off something like this, but I've actually went ahead and created this, and we'll talk a bit more about what everything does in just a moment. Now, you will notice, I believe it's the other way around, yeah it is. Now, when we call this uh, prodsum, which is the name of the file, dot prodsum, and this being the uh, name of the method, it runs just like it did last time. You can say 10 and 12, and it will be 120 and 22. And uh, the reason why is because it's being passed into what's known as a public sort of a, a public method. But what does public actually mean? And I'll tell you, public means that it is open for any other file to call that method. As long as it knows the name and how it's supposed to be called, it's allowed to call it. Now, that doesn't sound like it's a dangerous thing, and generally speaking, it's not. But on the same note, there's this rule in programming that is sort of like this. Never take a risk, no matter how unlikely it might seem, if you're not willing to pay the consequences. So generally speaking, what a, a programmer will do is they'll make uh, some type of, you know, uh, uh, an interface for you to access uh, a method. So, and then they'll keep the actual method itself from you know, being accessed. So with that being said, what we want to do is rather than have prodsum be easily accessible to anybody, we want to make it so it's only accessible if it's called from inside that class. And the way to do that is by changing this public to private. And now I've already programmed this out, which is something I don't normally do. Um, but I suppose it'll make more sense if I just try to explain it rather than trying to code it and explain it. Like I said, I already recorded this video once, so it's a little different. But you'll notice just by changing this from, from public to private, if we come back over here into our main, it says that um, prodsum has uh, private access. So it uh, that's telling us we, we can't get into it this way. The only way we can access prodsum as it exists now is if we make another method, which I've done right here, to call it from within the same class. As you can see, these both exist within the same class. So what we can do is we can instead pass int x and y into this new method that we've created. So let's change this from prodsum over to sum. And now let's take a look at the path that our, our variables are going to take. So first we input for x and y. And these are just normal uh, integer values. And they get passed over to here. And they retain their same name, x and y, although it bears mentioning that these are not... If we change the values in here, it does not get passed back here. Um, or well, it does, but only as a return our x and y will still be different values than what are returned. And we'll get more into passing by value and reference. Um, I suppose we might have time to do that this lesson. I don't know. Maybe next lesson. So we have x and y, and it's now been passed in. We set sum equal to 0. And then what we do is we set sum equal to the return from prod sum and then we pass in x and y. x and y retain their variable names. Um, 
because they're new in this scope. So the X and Y that we have in between these parentheses or brackets are not the same as the X and Y we have here. So anything we change here will be different than what we have over here. Um, I could change around the variables to make this a little bit easier on you, but I think that you guys kind of get the idea by now. When we return, it's returning to sum right here. And then we're returning sum to sum back here. And I know what you guys are probably thinking. You know, that's great. You can you can do this and all, but what's the point? You you didn't change anything. You're still just getting back the the product, you know, which is being spit out and the sum. And I would tell you, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. When we get into classes and things of that nature, you're going to see how easy it is for one incorrect method to screw up an entire swath of data. But until we get there, we don't really need access modifiers. I just felt that, you know, if we're going to be working with public and we're going to be working with private, I should show you guys how to work around it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to debug this program so you guys can see each step through it. So I'm going to start by running the cursor. And the it should ask me for two variables. So we'll do 12 and uh, 13. And I, I know, you know, just from knowing math, that, that should give us a sum of 25 and a, uh, a product of 156. So now it's stopped right after uh, I, I input this number because it just ran to the cursor. So we do a step over, and it comes down to this, uh, where we first call prod sum, or well, sum within the prod sum file. And we're going to do what's known as a step into here. Um, basically, what this does is we step into it, and it shoots us into this uh, method. If you were to check back out here, this would probably tell you that uh, there was a, a call to the stack, or something along those lines. But it seems to be wanting to tell me some other note, which is vastly unimportant. So we create sum, which immediately gets set to zero. And then once again, we're faced with uh, a call to a method. So we'll step into that. And you'll notice that when we stepped into this in our variables list, sum disappeared. And the reason why is because we're no longer in this uh, scope that sum exists in. So as long as we're not in that scope, sum doesn't exist the way that it used to. So now, when we run this next line, this is the current position of our program. When we run this next line, it should spit out our product. So we'll do a, uh, a step over. and tells us the product is 156. And then it's going to calculate the sum. Sum was not initialized up here, so sum technically does not have a value yet. And when we do a step over, it's assigned a value of 25. Then we return the sum, which means it's going to be passed back to right here. But at this point, sum still has not gotten the value because we need to do one more step over until this, uh, this semicolon is reached because we did a step into. So when we just did a step over here, it stepped back into this, but it did not step over this part quite yet. So we do one more step over. The sum is now applied. It's equal to 25. We return the sum to over here. So we can come back in here and hit step over again. And out here, once again, sum has not been given a value yet because, again, we just returned from the step in. So again, when we hit step over, the value that was passed to sum will be applied. And as you can see, once again, 25 has been passed. And so then all we do is we output sum of the numbers is 25. And then our next step over will end main and the class respectively. And so with that being said, I think what we can sort of look at um, from this sort of step through that I just did is that 
Access modifiers are not something we need to devote too much thought to quite yet. But it is good to know that private simply means that we need a, a method that's going to exist either within the class or within the object that allows us to pull the data that we need out of it. There will be times in the future when we will be using public and private, and I don't think we're going to use protected very much in this uh, tutorial series. I don't see much use for it. Um, subclasses might be a little beyond the scope of this program, or this, you know, tutorial series. But with that, all that being said, all you guys really need to take away from this is two things. Number one, public means anybody can access. Private means that only things that exist in the same class can access it. Um, return statements are still returning and they're still able to set variables. And there is one other thing that I guess I have time for. I want to explain what this line means. Um, it's not the easiest statement to explain, even now with everything that I've explained to you guys. But I think I can do it fairly well. Public still means the same thing. Anybody can access it. Static. What static means is that we don't have to create uh, uh, an object of the class. And we're going to talk more about static later. But basically what it means is we don't have to create an object to use main. Um, we'll talk about why and we'll talk about what that means later. Void simply means that it's not returning anything. The same way if we have a, a void in a method. It doesn't return anything back. Main. All main actually means is that it's the main part of the program. Um, you can only have one main per programming set, I suppose. And string args, this is the part that confuses a lot of people. What that actually means is when you call this program from the command line, we haven't been doing that, and um, we might get into that later, we might not. Um, I, I'm really not too sure how far I'm going with this tutorial series, but as it stands now, uh, I, I don't see too many ways that I would be able to make good use of that for you guys. But what I can compare string args to is sort of like MS-DOS. Um, a lot of people know what ipconfig is. If you type ipconfig in, it spits out some generic IP configuration sort of stuff. If you type slash all afterwards, it spits out a whole other swath of data. The same goes for netstat and then netstat-n, netstat-all, you know, whatever. And so that's basically what this is with Java. That string args means when we run this, we can pass it command line arguments, and they're stored as a uh, an array of strings. So we might say something like Java C, um, let's see, J tutor, Jesus, apparently I can't type it all. JTutorial one dot Java, and then I'll pass in some command line arguments after that. But we don't need to get into that any deeper than what we've talked about now. Um, again, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing anything with that, and if we do, I'm not really sure that it's going to matter. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to help you guys in any way because a lot of the time applications you're creating are not going to be using that. So understanding that intrinsically isn't going to be that big of an advantage to you guys. And I want to focus so much more on things that will give you guys an upper hand when you actually get to programming. So for now, um, I think I'm going to wrap this up here as I don't have much more time left. Uh, this has been episode 18. Uh, hopefully you guys will join me again for another episode. Uh, next lesson we're going to talk about passing by reference and passing by value what differences they have um, in case I haven't already alluded to it enough and we're going to wrap up methods next lesson so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time